five, seven, eight, one, three, five, seven, eight, one, three, five, six. I met Liam about five years ago at another gym. He was an athlete at the time and we grew to be best friends. And that's kind of how Flipping Out Tumbling was born. Guys, if you need to spread out some more, you can. Just work your way more to the middle of the floor so that way- We really started as nothing more than a social media platform where we were able to post uh, the growth and progression of our athletes. Flipping Out Tumbling kind of just grew and grew and grew. We were doing so many things that the opportunity came to open our own facility. We didn't know how it was gonna work or what we were gonna do, but we figured it out. Starting off as this gym, we just were a training facility. It became very apparent that all-star cheerleading was something that we needed to consider. So we're a brand new all-star program, so it's definitely gonna be interesting to see where this season takes us. We need to work on building the mold and building the culture of our gym for these athletes to come together. Let's go! Fast hand springs, once they pass the middle, the next person's going. Hard. Don't you just love it when I run conditioning? We actually have five coaches on this team. Um, it was a very strategic move for us because uh, we feel that each coach brings something different to the table. I coach here for all-star teams. I coach senior four and then I coach the world's team and I also do some private lessons with um, level one and two. That was behind a little bit. So still that looking in front, make sure as you're looking in front, you're looking at like your shoes, okay? I met DJ and Liam at a different gym that we used to coach at. So we all just kind of befriended each other. Then they started this gym. They decided this season to add all-star teams and I was kind of excited in that. I was interested with what they were gonna do. Seven hands in front, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. I am a team coach here at Flipping Out Tumbling, so I coach the senior four co-ed team, and I'm also one of the coaches for our world's team. So I met Liam and DJ. I'm sure we kind of crossed paths at one point, maybe a year ago. We were at a local competition. We were introduced with mutual friends. I do mostly tumbling classes here at Flipping Out Tumbling. It's really awesome to be a part of this world's team. Three, set on five, seven, down on one, up on three, hold five, seven, dip, one, settle. Hold six, seven, dip, one, stand three, good. Let's go, out one, breathe three, set on five, seven, down on one, three, hit, hold. Seven, dip, one, three, catch, four, hold, five, seven, good, one, pull, down, six, seven, let's go, three, breathe, six, seven, down, one, stand, three, hold, six, seven, dip, one, three, and fix and hold, seven, yep, one, pull, three, and five, seven, out, one, rest, good. Um, I'm a little bit more of the boss of the gym. I've been in this industry for 10 years. Business is my first thing, and, and I tell all of our athletes on our all-star program control, that, you know, once we're in practice, it's business time. Outside of the gym, I'm your best friend. Wow! I like, I like to see what the kids are gonna be capable of. I'm more of like a score sheet and rules coach, so when we're like stunting, I can make sure we're playing in the legal side of things. I think overall what I bring to the team is just a little bit of an old school flavor, I think, to the gym that maybe they're not used to with other coaches they've had. I like to kind of fall back to the like the skeleton and like the foundation of where our sport came from, how it evolved. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, up four, five. Here we go. Five. I try to be that like emotional support for people. Like if somebody's having a bad day, I try do my absolute best to find any positive in anything. I'm also like an extra hand for spotting things. Sometimes I'll help with stunting. If we're missing somebody, I'll jump in and do some back spotting. My big thing too is, is the cleanliness and the technique of things. I like making sure that everything and everyone looks yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, all right, five. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Caleb. 
That's why we put boys on the team. And one, three, four, Hold six. It. Oh my God. <laughs> what was that? You only get as far as you work. Specifically um, for this world's team, they all are workers. I think especially for a first year program, these kids are phenomenal. Um, when I saw them at the very first practice, I was just like blown away with how respectful they were and how talented they were. And I'm really excited for the industry to see what our gym, our tiny gym in central Pennsylvania, brand new first year, is going to bring to the floor. At the age group that we're dealing with right now, which most of them are, you know, in that early teenager, this is their peak. Something that I feel like we're going to improve is I feel like our kids are going to mature a lot. A lot of these kids have never actually been to Worlds before. A lot of them were in the process last year of going to Worlds and then that was stopped by COVID-19. It's going to be really exciting um, because it's, we're, they're going to get the first experience with us. Who are you and where did you come from? That was so good. There have definitely been a lot of changes in the gym due to COVID-19. We're always adapting and, and doing our best to maintain a safe environment for everyone in our gym. I will be interested to see how they will come together and rally and how they will be able to handle the intensity of a true full out, which is doing their routine from A to Z. So I think right now what we need to work on is building consistency so that way when it is time to put the routine together, we know what can go in and what cannot go in and we can build the strongest routine that we can for these athletes. Obviously, we want to do really well this season, but really I want to see this team come together so that they leave this season feeling that not only they accomplished something physically, but also mentally and emotionally with each other. I hate basketball. <laughs> Today we have Sean Guzman and Justin Gonzalez coming up from Miami to work on basket tosses and tumbling technique with our world's kids. They're a part of one of the most prestigious gyms in the world and their knowledge that they're bringing to the table is exactly what we want here at Flipping Out Tumbling. Doing probably two baskets in your team. We're going to be creating three total groups. And the reason why is that way, one, half of you guys are sitting down not doing any good shots. And two, if you guys ever need to replace athletes or move athletes around, at least you guys are all familiar with the drills and all familiar with throwing baskets. Same thing with the flyer. God forbid you guys have to replace a flyer. At least you have three flyers that know the drills and the positions and are kind of familiar with it and you're not having to work from like scratch. Uh, I met Sean a few years back at a gym I was working at. He did a clinic up there and we kind of, you know, kept in touch and last year we asked him to come up to do a camp with our athletes and he brought Justin up with him. It was the first time we met him but uh, we loved in working with Justin just as much as we love working with Sean. When you come out of the hurdle, it's going to be a straight line. Everyone should look the same. Okay, if we freeze frame any of these videos, everyone should look like this at the same time. Legs together, and five, six, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Hold. Thumbs are touching. Open hand. Clean. Good. Watch it full out, you 
can already tell yourself, okay, lens draw, that's 0.2 or 0.1. Okay, timing was off, that's another 0.2 or 0.1. Hey guys, before we even get to competition, we're already at a 4.6. We gotta start thinking like that, okay? Let's go. His prestige of his knowledge for the tumbling um, and stunting is impeccable. Justin, he's a younger coach, um, but he's eager to work hard. He did great last year at our clinic. The kids loved him. I, I'm really excited because that's kind of another thing that we try to build here at Flipping Out Tumbling is that younger, new style vibe um, that most gyms are sometimes stuck in the, in the earlier days um, and they're not adapting to the new style of tumbling and they're constantly learning, constantly getting better and it shows when they come and, and work with our kids and you know and we we love that aspect you know there's no one else better that i would want to work with them the same thing guys that i said earlier baskets just like tumbling just like stunning it's not gonna happen overnight you guys did a phenomenal job from the beginning to the end with your body control with your confidence applying corrections but it's not gonna be the same the next day you have to work at it you have to keep building those drills keep doing the drills every day, and then once you get to a point where it becomes second nature, then you can just jump to a basket and keep going. Overall, guys, you're an absolute pleasure to work with today. You guys worked super hard. You guys did not complain. You guys did not break. You guys did not get lazy. So you guys were an absolute pleasure to work with. And it's a, that is a testament to your coaches and a testament to the athletes that you guys are. Being a first year gym, I cannot wait to see what you guys are gonna put out on the floor. See you guys say to Sean and Justin. With a heavy heart, unfortunately, we had a team member pass away. Trey um, was in a car accident. It goes without saying, you know, Trey was a, a big part of flipping out tumbling. Trey was a hard worker. Um, by the time I met him, he, you know, was working at McDonald's and he, you know, was bought his own car and he was, you know, helping his mom and, and doing all kinds of things that showed me that I, you know, I wanted to hire him within Flipping Out Tumbling. He came in um, and he started off on a few classes and he grew so much in a short period of time within here. Um, kids loved him, his, you know, laugh, his smile, he energetic, he kept up with the kids. He started going to classes with us about two years ago and you know, he was coming in, he was throwing skills, and we did our best to try and clean him up, um, you know, and he tried out for us this season, and we were more than happy to have him and welcome him into our program. You know, a lot of these kids on this team had relationships with him um, before they even came to Flipping Out Tumbling. It's going to be a tough toll uh, for this team to rally, um, but I'm hoping that they do. Um, for not only themselves, but for Trey, as this is one of the hardest times they've ever had to deal with their entire lives. If I never thought I would have the opportunity to speak to a group of people about Trey, I would have never imagined it would have been at his memorial. Like all of you, I continue to grieve over the loss of an athlete, my friend, and a brother. Trey was the kind of kid that was passionate and hardworking. When he wanted something, he went and got it and that's hard to come by nowadays. Trey's passion took him far in such a short time. When I met Trey a few years ago, he was almost brand new to the cheerleading world, yet he was already throwing elite level skills. Trey was a self-taught tumbler, and at the time his skills were often scary, and trust me when I say it takes a lot to make me nervous. Over time, Trey's passion led him to grow into the athlete he was, talented, smart, and I'd even go as far as saying clean, he was resilient. He could be having the worst day, not feel good, or just be down, and I would always say, are you good, bro? And he would always respond back and say, I'm chilling. And he would continue to move forward. It didn't matter the circumstance. Trey would never leave anything in his tank because he always left it on the floor. Trey was an inspiration to so many. He inspired not only me, 
with the rest of our coaches, his teammates, and the younger generation of athletes in the gym. He pushed his friends' limits. He wanted them to be the best that they could be. And when that didn't work, he would balk like a chicken to make them laugh. His smile was contagious to the kids he coached, and he would always say things like, that was sick when they got a new skill. His favorite thing to say while coaching was, don't put your arms behind you, five sit-ups. Trey, you were taken from us way too soon, but your passion, light, and inspiration will live with us forever. No matter where we go, we will always carry you in our hearts. I know you're flipping around up there and teaching others to do cool tricks with you. Love you forever. Until we meet again, rest in peace. With losing a family member like Trey from this is just insane. For us coaches, we're going to have to make huge decisions on how to move forward and I think that we're more than capable of making those decisions and the kids themselves, I feel like, are going to step up to the plate and go for it for him, for themselves, for this team. Trey will always forever be a member of this team. Lord, we have all gathered tonight to pray for Trey and for Noah. Trey is our athlete, our teammate, and coach, and both Trey and Noah are our friends and our family. We pray that you look upon Trey and Noah with eyes of mercy. May your healing hand rest upon them. We ask that you give them so much strength as they continue to fight. Give them courage, give them comfort, and give them peace. Loving Father, we also ask that you heal the members of our family who are hurting emotionally. Give them comfort as well, give them peace, heal their hearts. We thank you and ask that you continue to provide all those involved with patience, hope, and love. Through Christ our Lord, amen. I've been wondering for a while whenever I see a smile, do you know that you compare to none? You're number one. start off with saying like the where the team is at at the moment okay give me three seconds okay at this point in time the team is preparing for choreography uh, we have about five practices left until Wes Haley comes to do our routine and we're really excited for him to come work with our kids but we have to get prepared to have our athletes at their best so he will give us his best in the routine that he gives us. The past couple weeks of practices have been super rough for everyone. Obviously losing a family member like Trey has been absolutely devastating for all of us to go through. Um, we as coaches have been doing our best to maintain a healthy environment for everyone um, and we've kind of slowed down a little bit to allow our athletes to have time to heal. But we have started to pick things back up again. Uh, we're moving forward. We need to um, try to do our best to do it for Trey, do it for each other, so that we can have the most successful season possible. It's gonna be a pretty hard practice today, um, fair warning, because um, we need to like actually figure out what we're doing moving forward going into that. We're gonna start with, I don't know how far I've run due to Biggie and Destiny's TikTok about me. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start it. I'm gonna start it. And then I will let you guys know when you guys are done running. <laughs> All right, get going. Stay at a good pace. Stay together. In the 
the short amount of time that the team has been together, we've already created such a family bond. So I'm really excited to see that continue to develop and to watch us continually have a successful season as it progresses. I think I bring a, kind of a leadership role to the team. I was the only person that walked into the first practice knowing everyone on the team and having some sort of a past relationship with everyone. So it was cool to, I kind of like brought people together and the people that didn't know everyone, I kind of tried to help everyone create a bond together. Um, I'm also one of the only people on the team that has ever been to Worlds. So I think when it comes time for Worlds, I'll be able to help better prepare everyone for what is to come since I already have that past experience with multiple performances there. Megan's a super strong stunter. She's probably one of the strongest main bases we have on this team and in our program. Uh, but something that she needs to work on is the consistency with her tumbling. Physically, she is a phenomenal tumbler. Mentally, we need to work on that growth. I'm a flyer and tumbler and double or nothing. It was kind of nerve wracking coming here because like I didn't know the people and I didn't know like what the atmosphere was. Yeah, over time it got better. Um, I came because at my old gym, no one really threw the skills that I threw and I wanted to get somewhere where they would push me more. I'm looking forward to getting close to my teammates and definitely going to competitions. Bella is a super strong flyer. She has beautiful body positions in the air and really good body control. Something that Bella needs to work on is her consistency with her tumbling. We need to work on building the consistency with her passes so that they look the same every time and we're confident putting it in a routine that it's gonna hit when she throws it on the floor. I need to work on like not getting as frustrated so easily because when a stunt like doesn't hit for like a couple tries, I tend to get frustrated a lot. Three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four. Hold, three, and. What I'm looking forward to this season is growing closer with my teammates and going to competitions. It's just exciting and all the energy and the atmosphere, it's great. This is Chloe's first year stunting. In previous years, she has been a highlight tumbler. Uh, she impressed us from the first practice on what she was capable of picking up very quickly. And we are super excited to have her underneath of our stunts this year. You don't stretch at the end of practice. I'm stretching. <laughs> Something I need to work on is definitely my attitude. During whatever, if I see something go bad, then that makes me want to give up. Because in my head, I'm like, oh, we're not going to win. But I know it shouldn't be like that. And I know it'll get better, but that's what I need to work on. Something that Chloe needs to work on is making sure that she continues to move forward when things aren't necessarily going the way she wants them to. Uh, we need to make sure that when things aren't going our way, that we are picking each other up and we are doing our best to make things work, even though it might not be happening right then at that time. Practice was kind of hard today. I forgot what it was like to run outside. <laughs> so that sucked. It was really hot out today. It's supposed to rain at six, but it didn't. It rained at like nine. And don't tell Liam or DJ this, but I hope it rains every practice. <laughs> Five, turn, seven, eight, one, two, three, five, seven, drop it, one, five, three, seven. Go get some water. I think the team is at a, kind of a rough spot right now. Um, obviously, we just lost a very important member of our team, and it's tough for the team to come into practices without him here. Um, he was such a big member of our family. And it's hard moving forward from that, knowing that he won't be with us the rest of the season. So it's tough having to come back from that. Our, all of our stunts and everything started getting pretty consistent. And now we're trying to move people around to make the stunts hit again. So we're trying to build that consistency back and um, some of the stunts aren't working as well as they used to be. So everyone gets really frustrated. Through this rough patch that the team is going through, I've been trying to stay 
positive myself and help everyone else stay positive because it is really easy to get frustrated quickly when things aren't working. Um, so I've been trying to stay positive and help everyone else stay positive and know that you know we'll get through it together. I stuck with Liam and DJ for as long as I did because of the difference in coaching styles between them and all the other coaches at every other program that I've been to before. Um, I knew that they would have a successful program. With the difference in coaching style and the amount of conditioning that we do at practice, I already feel more prepared for the rest of this season than I have for any other previous season. I believe overall we have the strongest athletes in our area, uh, physically and mentally. We have gone through the toughest couple of weeks of our lives, but our athletes are resilient, they're hard workers, and they're passionate, and they will rally and they will push through because they want this for themselves and they want this for Trey. Every team has some sort of unspoken playbook. And as a choreographer, your job is to kind of take that um, book of plays and put it all together in a specific order and make it flow. And um, kind of beyond that pure strategy of this is what we want to compete this year, you have to make sure that whatever you're giving a team for their choreography is entertaining and that it's fun so that the kids want to perform it. It has to be within the bounds of legality and it has to kind of um, make sure that you're following the rules. Yes. Two, except your right foot. Three, four. Um, let's take one more step. So, your left foot is forward on four. Go step forward with your right foot. One, two, three. The process of choreography is different for everybody, but um, there's some sort of like prep period, like a pre choreography period. There's the actual choreography, and then there could be some type of follow up. So, kind of the pre intra and the post um, period. It's a very creative process um, and that's kind of why it's different for everybody. It's not black and white. You're just gonna have your stomach on seven. I'll three of you. Go down seven. You, my dear. Not you. You. I'm gonna hit again. Set. Uh, more is enough. <laughs> Listen, you can't have a, a shirt on that says sparkle. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. <laughs> seven. Eight. One, two, stay down, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you know what you're doing? You seem confused. No, I know what I'm doing. That's just his normal look. Yeah. Thank you. That was sarcasm. Doing good. Kenny. What? Good that job. was sarcasm? Yeah, you really thought you were doing good? Yeah, I thought I was doing great. I think you did great, Kayla. Thank you. Did you there watch we go. It? Some appreciation. Yeah, I did watch it. Yeah? And then Sparkle over here is gonna kill it on that seven. Excuse <laughs> me. You, I almost kicked you out for that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. All right, good. One more time, then we'll stop and take a little break, get some water. I'm a break guy. I think choreography today is sick. We got a pretty good backbone going on, like the routine, a good skeleton going on. Next couple of days, he'll just add in the choreography, the fluff, and stuff like that. I'm really excited. It's going to be good. You are now aware, most of you, of what is going to be expected of you throughout the routine. And it's, what's the date? Uh, September 15th. Mid-September. You have plenty of time to make sure that you are physically and mentally 
capable of getting through this routine. The harder you work in here and the more sweat and blood and tears that you put in here, by the time you hit the floor, you're not gonna be stressed out about anything. But I just want you to like mentally start getting ready to prepare yourself to be able to get through this stuff. Teams that do well and teams that win don't just come in and practice and only do this while they're here. Yeah, everyone can like coach you as, as, as much as they want, but if you're not picking up what they're throwing down and you're not on board with what they're saying, then this isn't for you. They do not go home and omit this from their brain. They literally stress and think about this stuff all day and night. So you need to return the favor, you know what I mean? Put in the same effort that your coaches are giving you. I don't care about a trophy. I care about the fact that you have put your absolute best effort into it and you are smart enough to know that you can always do better. But that's not gonna happen unless you like literally push, push, push so hard in here to where that stuff just becomes second nature. Um, really good job today. I feel like it went really well. I like you guys. I don't feel like I hate any of you. That's a positive. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what, what I do? No, no, I'm just messing with you. Um, but really good job. At its true, authentic form, choreography is an art. And every artist or every choreographer is going to approach that differently with the same goal or the same end goal in mind. You know, you want to give your client a really good product and you want to make sure that they're able to use the choreography, the routine that you're giving them and succeed for the season. In my opinion, aside from coaching and the actual kids on your team, you know, music and choreography are huge components of what may or may not dictate your success for the season. Being a choreographer and the process of choreography is a really big job and it entails a lot of responsibility. Um, it's kind of like saying, you know, if you're interviewing someone on the red carpet and you're like, oh, who are you wearing? And they're like, Dior. It's like, oh, who did your choreography? Wes Haley. Making sure that you're choosing the right person is a really important decision. True. The teams that win divisions constantly are teams that are so entertaining to watch, they are not always doing the hardest thing. They're not always pushing themselves the hardest physically but they are acting like they are having the best time that anyone's ever had, ever before, ever. The entire opening, you didn't even crack a smile. You are on center, and then you are about to do some of the hardest cheerleading that anyone's seen. Girl, you won't be able to tell me nothing. I would be like the baddest Helga the Tacky. Anybody know who that is? Rap raps, come on. <laughs> Any of them. I like I would be like I would just I would I would give the impression like y'all don't even know what you're in for. You don't even know what you're in for. And I would stand there like, just wait. Just just give it a minute. I promise you you're gonna be fangirling me for the rest of your life. Take the moments. Take them. Again. The last couple of weeks have been a little tough. Um and the girls and Caleb have been doing more of like a roller coaster of emotions. Some days they're on, some days they're off. Um, with having Wes come in and re reiterate everything that we were already telling them and just to hear it from another voice, um, Wes kind of made them aware of the expectation and the drive that they need to put into this because Wes actually has won Worlds. They've won NCA um, with Gym Time Fever. Um, so he's won at competitions. He's watched the kids develop and he knows what's expected. Um, so for him to go through and pour everything and his knowledge into these kids, it really, I felt like, boosted them up because after he gave them the choreography, they have been going hard ever since then um, so it was a good rejuvenation for the kids the athletes um, to really step it up take the next step forward um, and just you know perform his this amazing routine that he gave them and you're gonna step back on seven and on eight i want you to take your right arm and hug your 
Go to your stomach, your left hand is gonna go behind your head. I'm gonna go seven. Two, like seven. Eight, drop down. One, hit. Two, hit. Three. Nine. 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 You guys know what you're doing? Yeah. And on eight, you're gonna like just open your knees and you're gonna whip your hair. So you roll five and six, you hit your knee. Five, three, you go on five, hit seven. Hi, glasses. Yeah. Only have one mode, ladies. <laughs> that mode is sickening. <laughs> the dance is pretty good. We have to clean it up a little bit, work on some parts, but definitely like yeah, it. Yeah, okay, it's just like, so good? There you go. I'm going to kill them. <laughs> uh, our yeah. kids are struggling yeah. with the dance. No. But. They're getting better, but it's fine. They'll get it. Oh, cool. It's okay to make a mistake. It's not okay to make the same mistake over and over again without asking a question and being like, what am I doing wrong? You know what I mean? Um, so as long as you're getting better, I'm totally down with it. I like the energy that you're bringing me when we're going through this stuff. There could always be more. Always, 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 always. Yeah? Set a new standard for what it's, out, it's like out here. Like this place needs some new blood. This place needs a new, like, start. And there's no reason why you should not be that gem. Remember that as well when you're going through. Like, there's this, uh, there's gonna be an expectation and maybe some people are gonna be like, hmm, and hope you fail or whatever. I love things like that. Things like that drive me. That things like that are like huge motivation. I always tell my kids, I'm like, I'm like you better be like the nicest person that anyone's ever met until you hit the floor. Then you hit the floor, and you're a beast. You're an animal. It has everything to do with that switch in your head that you need to turn on when you get, to, when you get here. Because as soon as that music comes on, or as soon as someone starts counting, it's over for everybody else. It's over. There can be no fear. There can be no hesitation. It is just full throttle, right in your face, doing what you need to do to make it happen. This area needs a new start. You should be that star. You should be that program. You should be that gym. You should be that team. That when you compete locally, that everyone's like, we have to go watch seven. And your crowd is huge. Half of them hate you, half of them love you, but they are there watching and that's fine the bigger the crowd the better the score so why not make the crowd huge okay good tomorrow the expectation that i have uh for this routine and for this team um goes without saying is perfection um i want the best possible product that they can give you know it's a tough tough routine um, that they were given. Um, so for them, it's gonna be a lot of endurance. It's gonna be a lot of, um, you know, push that they're gonna have to give themselves um, to get through it. And honestly, I feel like at this point, we are doing very good. Um, we got a lot of time left until we actually compete. Um, and I think by the time we get to the first competition, um, all of these kids We'll have this routine so broken down and, you know, know it so well that they're going to perform it at the best of their ability. I'm so excited for everyone to see the routine that Wes Haley created for us. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought that the team was great. I feel like they worked really hard. They gave me everything that I asked for them to do. I'm, I'm excited to see this year and like their season and what it, how it actually unfolds because I feel like they could really do some serious damage. So, good luck, guys. Double or nothing. Practice is practice. We have good practices, we have bad practices. But generally, our team is doing a fantastic job at moving in the right direction, preparing for Showcase on December 12th. 
It's been a few months since Wes Haley has been here to do choreography. Uh, we've had a couple of changes in our roster. We've lost a couple of athletes. We've also gained a couple of athletes. So needless to say, there's been a couple of changes in the choreography. So basically what we're doing now, friends, is um, adding Jossie in. So it's just a matter of maneuvering some people around and it shouldn't take us long. So just stay focused. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a little overwhelming. But since I was here at choreography, like I know most of the motions. So like I'm able to be put in like anywhere where I can like kind of coordinate to what they were doing already. I'm getting like the hang of it more now. I injured my rotator cuff last season in February and then I started stunting again and I re-injured it and I've been out for a while and going to physical therapy and hopefully I can come back in like a week. So until then what are you doing during practices? Uh, standing pools and jumps and motions so like nothing. Yeah. Liam? It's going great. Having a good time. <laughs> what's, your, what's your position? I'm a flyer. I feel like it's going really good. I feel like everyone's like killing it. The hardest part for me is the stunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was... Um, the hardest part of the routine for me probably has to be the standing tumbling portion with my two to full standing full two to double. My standing full hasn't been good recently, but I'm working on it. All right, it's not bad, but your whip's a little bit high. So you need to turn over more when you come out of your round off. So we're coming through that round off, you need to get a bigger pop off the floor and really sweep your feet through like you're doing a back handspring so the whip can be lower so that way the pull goes up more and you don't over and into your butt. I saw you land one. Good job. Can I do one more time? Everybody's a family here. Like everybody's nice to everybody. And everybody's always talking and hanging out. And it's just a family environment. And they're really supportive. All right. Kayla. Yes. <laughs> What's with all the costumes? It's Halloween practice. It's my favorite practice. What are you guys? Is it obvious? It's for the We're camera. the Powder Puff Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Post choreography, one of the elements we still needed for our routine was the pyramid. Fortunately enough, we were able to get Chris Cox from Next Level Choreography to come choreograph our pyramid. Put her out, she'll walk, they walk, no, just lead up. She'll walk right into the groove, apparently. Okay, you guys walk over here, which gives us a moment to just be like, I don't know, actually. Uh, Chris did an amazing job choreographing our pyramid. He definitely knew what he was doing, he knew the rules, he knew the score sheet, and he definitely had a creative brain that was able to come up with something fantastic for our routine. We got a pyramid now. So now we're no moving. Fun at all. But we got a lot to do. So back to the grind again. This year, we were fortunate enough to be able to hold our first ever gym bonding event at the Farm 1840. It was awesome to get to see all of our athletes in normal clothes, getting to hang out with all the athletes from the rest of the program and bond with kids that they might not get to hang out with on a normal basis. This is your 2021 world's team of this gym. Give them a round of applause. Uh, I coach this team alongside Katie, Liam, Paul, and Kayla. They've been working super hard. Um, it's been a privilege to coach them this season. They've exceeded my expectations and they continue to push as hard as they possibly can. It's been a rough year up to this point for this team, uh, losing a member and having to recover from that, it's been very difficult. But they've stepped up to the plate and we've made the changes that we need to make to move forward. Um, and we're very, very excited um, to take the floor. We appreciate all of you for what you um, have done for the season, for us, um, to get these kids here and to devote, you know, as much time as you do, and we can't be blessed enough to have each and every one of you 
along with all these kids in our program. So thank you very much. With the past couple of months being particularly difficult for our program, the gym bonding event was a perfect way for our athletes to come together and take one step further in the future of our gym. Hey, are you are you for real gonna help um, guest coach on Thursday at practice? I can, yeah. All right, because I'm 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 uh, being interviewed right now for the show, and I wanna I want Ty to videotape if you're there, so I wanna make sure I say something about you. Practice starts at six thirty. Oh, okay, perfect. Eh, gas. All right, cool. <laughs> We had Shay Myers come do a cleanup camp with our World's Kids. Uh, Shay is from Gym Time, Illinois. He works at the program owned by Wes Haley, our choreographer. Shay's routines are well known across the nation for being some of the cleanest and tightest cheerleading routines that are put on the floor every season. And we're really excited for one of our best friends to be able to come work with our kids. So this is Shay Myers, he's Liam and DJ's friend. He came in and is just kind of cleaning up our stunts, doing doing some routine cleanup, just having fun with them. You know, it's always good to have like a fresh set of eyes or a guest coach or something come in. Um, it's always a good time coming here, seeing DJ, Liam, and also the whole program. I used to help coach a couple of these kids and then going away to a different state and coaching there and then coming back. The kids are wonderful. They're very coachable. They adapt and listen to corrections. I mean, I just love seeing that DJ and Liam are focusing on their dream and trying to do like the training program, turning into all-star and then also keeping the tumbling and they're doing what they love to do. So I'm just here to help support them. The routine that Wes Haley gave us is tough and we felt that it was necessary to make a couple of changes for what we're calling our showcase routine. The routine that we're performing at showcase is going to be much more watered down than the routine that we are going to be competing later in the season uh, because we want to make sure that our athletes are going to get on the floor and feel confident in performing what they're doing and not have any doubt in their mind that they're going to land on their feet and they're tumbling or they're going to hit their stunt. Set it up. Here is the dilemma. The natural reaction for us right now is to send you home. You need to take ownership of this routine and what you can hit solid every single time. Because if you do not feel confident moving in, you're not going to get better. And at this point, like, we don't know what to do with you. Because things that are messing up don't normally mess up. Khaled hasn't dropped in four practices, five practices. All of a sudden, it's, it's dropping now. We can't do the full around TikToks. Bella's came out last practice, now Biggie's is out. We've now watered down everything. You're not jumping. We're about to remove Pyramid because, you know, that's been the most solid thing that we've been doing up to this point. And now we're gonna remove that because we're too lazy to finish. You need to get mental with it and focus on what you're doing.
walking into tonight's practice, I don't know if the jitters were getting to them or if they were um, a little anxious because, you know, it's so close. By the end of practice, um, the energy in the gym was crazy. We uh, were hitting off stunts, um, all tumbling was going. We have the perfect routine to show these parents um, and it's, it's just going to be an amazing event. For the team personally, I'm excited to see how we all work together on the mat because this is our first time like ever being on the mat together. But I also am nervous because like with COVID and everything, we haven't competed since like at least like six months or so ago, even more. Yeah. So that's a little nerve wracking for sure. We've watched most of you grow up over the last however many years and miss it, miss it, miss it, miss it, miss it. We're trying to give you the most opportunity to take it for the first time. Okay? Take it. I'm not worried. Based on today, when we started, I was like, Ugh. watching that, I'm not worried anymore. And you shouldn't be either. You can hit it now, you can hit it then. Your season starts Saturday. have zero expectation other than you guys coming off the floor happy. All they are excited for is to come watch you because it's all everyone's been talking about from day one since we opened this building. Nobody knows you guys, no one knows where you're coming from, no one knows your issues, no one knows anything other than them stepping on and watching you for two and a half minutes. You guys have this. Do your jobs and it will work.
I'm so proud of the team. Like we have never ever done a routine like that ever and it was incredible and I couldn't be more proud of what we put out there. Our kids today put everything that they had on the floor and they put out an amazing performance and we're super excited to be able to start off our season on such a positive note. Yeah, I'm so happy with where these kids have come from, their build, their resiliency. Like, I just can't ask for anything better. A general impression? That was freaking gnarly, bro, let's go! Friday night we participated in Operation Cheer Sport with the Atlanta Jayhawks. Uh, everyone traveled there safely, got there on time, and we had one of the best practices that we've ever had. Watch this. Leading up to cheer sport, the team dealt with a lot of adversity. Um, we had an athlete unfortunately get injured and is going to be out for the rest of the season. And multiple coaches and athletes ended up testing positive for COVID. So we were all quarantined up until the week before cheer sport. Hey everyone, this is Skyler. Unfortunately, we had an injury on the team, um, but Skylar actually showed up like right around the same time, and she started on the team as an alternate, and we were able to throw her right in, and she is competing with us this weekend at Cheer Sport. It was super exciting to be able to be involved with uh, our friends Colton and Lennon, and them allowing us to go into their gym to perform our routine at their showcase for Cheer Sport. Honestly, they, these kids, they have never looked better. I think they're ready to go. Um, tonight's gonna be a really fun night. Um, we're gonna be showcasing with the Atlanta Jayhawks. Um, tomorrow morning um, is business time, so I'm really excited to see what these kids put on the floor. What's up? How you feel right now? Great. Yeah? Yeah, we have to put our shoes on and walk in this crap. Oh. Are you excited or nervous or both? What are you most excited about? Um, jumps. Why? <laughs> because I've had like compliments and my jumps were good. So. Yeah. Well, what are you most nervous about? Pyramid. Why? Because I'm cheer fast. Sport. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Welcome to cheer started our warm up we were you know running stuff and and they were killing it we were definitely catching the eye of other coaches that have been in the industry for a long time yeah they were stopping and watching and they were like literally like who are these people? I mean, first year gym, we've never been in cheer sport before. Um, it was a really good feeling um, having, you know, these teams and these coaches stopping and watching us. Um, and, you know, it was giving our kids a big confidence boost. It definitely gave myself a confidence boost um, that we're, you know, in the right spot and we're doing the right things and um, that, you know, they're eyeing up us as competition um, in the division. We got to the very last mat and unfortunately, we were doing a basket toss that landed a little bit weird on top of one of the bases. We did end up having a little bit of an injury 
and it just kind of shifted our momentum for day one. We had this, you know, big excitement. We were hitting everything. We had the best warm up. We were moving into one of the biggest stages in cheerleading. And at the very last second, you know, the one thing went wrong and um, going onto the floor, you could tell that there was a lot of nerves, um, but we still were excited. We were, you know, ready to see what they had to put on the floor. We thought they were going to kill it. And unfortunately they went out and they didn't hit the routine that they deserve to hit, that they've been working for months to do. And we ended up dead last after day one. The feeling of leaving the Georgia World Congress Center that day was upsetting. I don't even know the words, like it's just, I was, defeated because we've worked so hard to get to where we were um, and just the warm-up in itself was just like mind-blowing. It was disheartening you know our athletes have worked so hard um, they were they've been getting so consistent and they truly deserve to go out there and show the industry those things happen it's part of the sport. Yesterday, I was not upset with the routine itself. Okay? I felt defeated just as much as everybody else when the rankings come out. If we need to take this as a learning experience. That's it. It is very, very, very hard to step into cheer sport as your first ever in live competition and do what you did. Like yesterday, high highs lead to low lows. So when we're having a good warm up, it needs to be focus mode. Like obviously we're cheering each other on, we're being loud, but it's always in the our brain that we need to be focused on what we're doing, focused on the details, and focused on executing every single skill that we're doing. So your goal today is to be your best as an individual and be your best as a team and go out there and walk up the floor happy. Day two. Um, we definitely were in rally mode to make up as much as we possibly could. You know, they seemed amped and ready to go, and we just got to that last last floor, um, and it just momentum shift again. They definitely went out on the floor and hit a much better performance than they did on day one, um, but we did still have mistakes, and unfortunately, we were not able to do enough to move up a whole lot, but we did end up uh, placing ninth out of 10 in the division. This was our first ever live event with this team. First year gym, first year team, first live competition. Moving into a live event, you have that pressure of you're competing against other teams, you're competing for a world's bid, and the pressure is definitely something that got to them. I think it was a little bit of a, a wake up call for the athletes on the team to learn that they need to always, always, always be focused at every moment that they're on the floor. You know, it, it is a tough, tough division, and obviously at the end of the day, everybody wants to win, so you don't ever want to like have to water things down or not put your best on the floor, but in some cases, you have to make those decisions to make the betterment of the team. So I know that I took a lot on my shoulders because I feel like I need to make the decisions to get the best results for these kids. They always are gonna push and do as much as they possibly can. Um, so I need to step up as the head coach of this team and make decisions that are going to better the team. We're definitely taking this as a lesson learned and we're moving forward from it to try to create better results for them throughout the rest of the season. After how disheartening the weekend was, Sunday night something kind of crazy happened. Um, we were sitting there and we watched the bid reveal and we did not receive a bid to the, the cheerleading worlds and about an hour later we got a phone call and they had missed our name on the bid reveal, but we actually did receive an at-large bid. It feels good knowing that even though we weren't doing what we were fully capable of doing, 
that our athletes were still capable of obtaining such a huge goal and knowing that when we do hit our routine like we know these athletes can, what that's going to bring for them. So we got done with cheer sport and we came home and we've been grinding and grinding and grinding and picking ourselves up um, and fixing and we've been competing in a bunch of competitions. Virtual awards. We're having a whole lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Battle at the Capitol was our first virtual event that we did after we came home from cheer sport um, and it was definitely a point in time where the kids were in rally mode so they were coming in working hard and the results paid off because it ended us with a first place battle jacket which was pretty awesome. Literally shaking right now. My heart's racing. After that we went to Beast and that was followed up by second place. Um, Beast of the East was also a virtual event and we had a really good showing. Again, tough competition. Um, it was very close, but we ended up taking second, which we were proud of. Reach the Beach was insane. We're in Ocean City right now to reach the beach and I'm super excited because our last practice was really good. So I just can't wait to take the fourth day. But here's Why are you nervous, Dana? Yeah, Jay. Why are you nervous? Get in her face. Yeah, get it. Get up all in that dog. Why are you nervous? I feel a lot better from cheer sport. A lot better, my head doesn't hurt. My sets are really solid. I'm feeling really good. Everyone has a good energy right now. It has a good positive attitude, including me. But I think we're gonna do really good. We are at the moment in time where these are all hit routines and it's how far we can drive our score up, all right? That's what the name of the game is right now. I'm not worried about hitting a zero. I'm, I'm worried about how hard we're going to hit the zero. Be smart. All right? That's it. Control, talk, work together, live your best life, and act like you are just going to like kill them. All right? I'm proud of you. Catch some air. Talk amongst one another. We're going to do a walk, and then we'll circle walk down there. All right? Yeah, we're going to eat. We're going to eat. Oh. Um, I'm super excited. They're gonna kill it. I, 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 have, I have good juju right now. It's good vibes. So let's go.
Man, this team cannot catch a break. Uh, after Reach the Beach, we had another series of unfortunate events. Uh, Kenny hurt her thumb when she was stunning. Uh, she actually tore a ligament in her hand. She was casted for a while. Biggie ended up getting a concussion, so she's been out for a few weeks. Uh, Chloe had an exposure to COVID, so she was in quarantine for a while. Uh, we actually ended up bringing Bella Reichert up from Ocean City, Maryland. We literally called her on a whim and we were like, hey, can you be at practice tomorrow? And she's like, sure, I'll be there. She hasn't cheered in five years. So honestly, the past couple weeks, we have literally had no idea who is going on the floor for Worlds and what kind of team we were gonna have, what kind of routine we were gonna have. And we are sitting two weeks away. Tonight, we had the first practice that we were able to put something together and a weight has been lifted off of everyone's shoulders. We now know that we have a couple different options, some plans that we can move forward with for Worlds and have a routine that is gonna be solid, it's gonna be clean, we're gonna be able to hit and we're gonna be able to showcase a beautiful routine at the Cheerleading World Championships this year. Watch out, Orlando. These kids from Double or Nothing are coming for you. We are at Top Gun Orlando. We're practicing today, you know, getting them ready to go for the weekend. We compete tomorrow. I feel pretty good. I'm feeling a lot, a lot of confidence for going into um, worlds and competing. Enjoy this weekend. Positive vibes, talking to one another. Um, for those of you that are like hanging out, friends, all that stuff, it's business time from now until we are done. Okay? So stay focused. We love you. You guys are great. Hey, I want to let 
you know, right. we've been watching all morning long. Watch. Yeah, worlds. Oh, oh, okay. Um, the only person that this is concerning to me for is you. The floor, it looks, it looks super bouncy. So just be prepared for it to be super bouncy. Ty, I think this is where we depart from you. ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex. Thank you for joining us today. to get you there and obviously there were mistakes um, and because of those mistakes um, that's why we're not going to be moving forward you guys have learned so much this year about yourselves and about how to work together and really how to overcome anything and if you can overcome everything that you've overcome so far this season you can overcome this you're a first year team from a first year gym and you competed at the cheerleading world championships and the fact that you got here is a blessing in itself. I think for you guys, you need to remember this moment because some people will take this moment and they'll be defeated by this moment and they'll use that to say, well, I'm done, that sucked, I'm done. And they'll quit and they'll give up. Um, but what you need to do is you need to use this to drive you into next season. You need to use this to drive you into your futures because all this should do is add fuel to the fire to make you want to work harder and to make you come back next season with a vengeance and with fire in your heart ready to go. You guys are young. You have a lot more performances to put on the mat and this is only one of those. So use this moment to drive you, to push you forward, to be a champion and to set you up for your future. The real test of a champion is how you react to this, how you react, how you move forward, and how you come back. So use this moment, we love you guys, and we're really excited to see what you guys do in the future. One last time, do it for you. Do it for you, do it for Trey, five, six, seven, eight, two, O-T, F-O-T, forever. This team has actually made me personally a better coach for a whole lot of reasons. It's taught me patience, it's taught me resilience, it's taught me if at any point in my cheerleading career this team has brought the best out in me um, and I feel like for that I owe them. Coaching at this elite level it takes a lot of mental, like my brain never shuts off um, with this entire team and it's been a great learning experience for myself so honestly at the end of the day like I owe this team a lot of how I'm gonna coach next year because I'm I'm learning and taking away and figuring out what is wrong what is right in certain circumstances to hopefully better our um, whole experience on this you know top team every season they say like you're, you're learning accountability, you're learning work ethic, you're learning, you know, how to be a good teammate, how to, you know, you're learning all these life lessons. And this season was tough. And I think more than any season that these kids have learned that. It's, it's way more than just cheerleading now. It really has become life and learning how to overcome adversity you know losing a team member like Trey and knowing that you know how proud he would be of these athletes and injuries and you know managing to work our way through a pandemic to make it to one of the most prestigious events in cheerleading is a win 
in itself. And these athletes should be proud of everything that they have accomplished this season, period.